ahead and uh, uh, jump into the content. And keep in mind, uh, we want to keep this interactive if we can. So please, if you have questions or things, throw them in the chat and I'll try to cover them. Let me start with some um, user uh, training stuff, focus on the Connect client. I had a lot of questions about several of these, so I want to try to hit a few of them in rapid succession. First thing I want to talk about is uh, ways you can use the Quick Dialer. When you click on it and you type in a name or a portion of a name, it'll pull up all those matches. Mine takes a second because I've got like 5,000 contacts in there. That's a real number, so it's a little slower. Uh, on yours, it'll be lickety split very fast. But you see I typed in my name. I've got kind of a backup phone I use for these sort of trainings. And this is my regular desktop line and my cell phone number. I've also got a link here for more that lets me pull up the ability, since it's an internal short tail phone, to do things like send a message. Um, I can click this down arrow, see all the numbers I have linked to it, potentially start a live webinar, all that stuff you can do uh, with your team members. So that's stuff you can do with the quick dialer, very easy to do. Backing up, I can click to dial my, my backup phone. So you can kind of hear it ringing back there in the background. I'm going to hang up, not answer that call, or not complete that call. So that's a quick dialer. Just remember, it's out there for you. You can use it really for uh, a variety of things. I'm going to pick on, uh, uh, I know Brittany DeFilly is here, but her husband Mike is as well. I can also see Mike's available, so he could be reached. I click on more, and I can see the chats I've had with him. All that's right there. And I can see that Mike is listed as one of my favorites, which means he shows up in my contact list. Brittany is in a meeting mode because she's on the webinar right now monitoring Q&A and chat for us as well and also uh, recording this for us. So that's the quick dialer. Uh, don't forget that's there. It's super powerful. Contacts is the old 14-2 uh, uh, favorites. It's the same thing. And you can put anybody you want in here. They don't have to be even inside your company. They could just be outside the company as long as they're tagged as a favorite uh, in your contact. So if I go up here and I add in, um, let me pick somebody. Choose a Michelle. My wife's name is Michelle. So we find a Michelle here. Uh, and there she is, Michelle Going. Definitely one of my favorites. So I'll put her in there. So now. You'll see when I go to my contacts and I scroll down a little bit, there she is right there. The reason the presence status says unknown is keep in mind she's not an internal user, so we don't have any presence status on her phones. She's an external user only. But I've got her cell phone and her landline there, and I could call her right from here very easily. Um, another quick thing is, is if you notice here by Mike DeFilly's name, it shows Vertex Consulting Service Project Team. That's there because that's in our MyTel directory. So for administrators, remember, you've got that in your MyTel directory system. You can put in their position, company, and title, and that stuff will show up in your favorites if you tag them as a favorite. Uh, nice way to sort by that or search by that. Next, groups. So I've got favorites. Now maybe I want to group them. So what I've done is I've created some of my own group headings. Here's one for Help Desk with the Help Desk team on it. Here's one I have for sales team with the sales team on it. And then I've got one for MyTel Techs, which we'll soon have on there, uh, Dave Potter as well. Those groups are super easy to create. They can also be organized in various ways. The thing I like about this is I could kind of on the fly start a chat using the internal MyTel Secure in my network a chat feature just by clicking this button. It'll bring all of them into a single chat group, so you can pose a question to them, you know, ask for feedback, ask for input. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to demo it on the uh, MyTel text because, honestly, they are usually so in the weeds with working with clients on their screen, they usually don't have the communicator or the Connect client up. But on the sales team, I'll go ahead and click on that one and do a quick uh, sales team chat. And now you'll see right at the top, all those five members are in a single chat. So I'm just going to type in, this is a test chat to the sales team, um, reply if you can. Now, they did not expect this. I didn't warn them it was coming. But uh, I put a little smiley face in there and hit send. They're all going to receive that. 
and then any of them could reply, and we'll all see each other's replies in that chat window. So I really do like that group chat if you're trying to pose a question or get feedback. Um, in bigger businesses and larger enterprises, we're seeing a lot of people use Microsoft Teams, and we're seeing a lot of people use Slack, which is a, another tool for that kind of thing. Uh, I would tell you that, you know, I'm for minimizing tool use and putting as many things as possible into a single tool. That's a personal preference of mine, to just be more efficient with the tools we have. So remember, if you don't want to go full bore Slack or Teams, you can use this group chat and get you some similar functionality. So you can see Brittany replied, Matt replied, and we can all see each other's replies in there. So that's a really nice uh, thing to have in your favorites. Uh, again, that's all under contacts in groups. Uh, for favorites, just remember, uh, in addition to being able to add people to the favorites, we also have the ability to change the sort order. You can sort by last, first, availability, or last contact. This last contact is probably my favorite way to do it. Uh, when I started this, I did it by first name because I wanted to see, you know, you to see me scrolling through it by on name basis. But my personal preference is to use this availability. The reason is it resorts it based on the most frequent or the, the most recent phone call that I've made. So I love the ability to see exactly what's going on here based on who I talked to the most recently. Um, that's important for me because I end up talking to the same, you know, internally, 8, 10 people all, all the time. So they're always at the top of my stack. Ryan, who is one of our Mitel uh, sales engineers and system engineers, I talk to him constantly, so he's right at the top of my stack. But it, just remember, you've got the option to sort it kind of any way you like uh, right there for you, very easy to access. So that's favorites uh, and favorite groups. I also want to touch briefly on um, recent again. One of the things I like about recent is you can jump to your missed calls and see any calls that you missed, call them right back. But here from the all, you can see everyone, and you have an option to export your call data. Uh, i got a question here. Chat recorder for public records. Is the chat recorded for public records? So uh, to answer that question, I would say yes and no. Um, the, the, the reason I say yes and no is you can disable that ability or enable that ability. Uh, so a lot of our government clients, uh, their public records officials have decided that chat are real-time communications and therefore they're not to be recorded and not to be accessible for public access. They made that determination, so they're going to stick with that. We've had some people who want to go get it. So really kind of is up to you, but be glad to help you specifically on it. Definitely. Um, you know, you and I can get together personally, make sure you've got exactly what you need. So I don't want to say yes or no, because again, you have that option, but uh, potentially yes, of course. Also, uh, another question came in, which was, is the screen share functionality on a specific version of the Mitel client? Um, the answer to that question is, it's, it's on any system where we have deployed a, um, the Mitel Conference Bridge application. So Mitel has, a long time ago, under 14.2, even years ago, we had an appliance called the SA100 Service Appliance, which was voice and video conferencing. And you could use that appliance to do that. So this has been available for, you know, several years now in 14.2 and now in Connect. So the answer to your question really is that uh, it, it's less dependent on the client that you're using and more dependent on the fact that you've got this service appliance deployed. Um, that said, today, you can, and, and now in Connect, you can deploy a virtual service appliance called a VSA at no charge. The, the, the virtual service appliance just goes into VMware, so you have to have, provide the VMware resources. But there's no licensing fee and there's no other fee for that. Um, and that new VSA, even the free version, gives you the chat. You'll see we just had uh, Ryan pile in a reply to us there with a hello. But um, so to answer that question, you need a, either a service appliance in 14.2 or a VSA virtual service appliance in Connect, and then you would have that ability. Uh, I'd be glad to uh, you know, follow up to you on that and get you any more details that you need as well. So, so definitely let me know if that answers your question. Um, so 
going back to uh, where we were at just a second ago on those uh, recent calls, remember you can export these, right, and export that call data. It'll drop it into an Excel file, gives you up to 30 days, that's your options. And I'll save it in my documents, it's right there, and I can pull up my documents. You'll see it's in my quick access. It's an Excel spreadsheet. Pretty easy to use this if you're familiar with Excel. Uh, I am going to increase the size to make it a little easier for all of us to see, make these columns a little bit wider. And now I can also sort these, and I can look for a specific pattern match. Let's say I want to say contains uh, 1929. Nope, never called that number. Let's clear that one and let's go for contains um, 482. I hadn't called that one either. That's a, our internal uh, our internal numbers, but let's do the last one and then contains 800. I've got to have called some 800 numbers in the last 30 days. There you go. So I can see now every 800 number I called, the date the call was placed, the time, um, was it incoming or outgoing, the number that was dialed, and the duration in minutes and seconds. So that's kind of neat if you want to be able to give a record of someone of the calls that were made or you want to find when you called, it's all right there for you. Uh, you can sort, search, save it, export it, uh, really nice capabilities there in your recents. I'm um, not going to spend much time on voicemails, but I do want to uh, remind everybody of something here, and that is the uh, voicemail has your all unheard and your saved. Once you delete a voicemail, there's a nightly process that kicks off inside the MyTel system, and deleted voicemails are purged. After that process runs, not even we can get them back. So please do not leave of messages you'd like in the deleted. We do get asked a question a lot about recovering deleted messages. The only way to do it is it's very difficult. Uh, it really would be a last ditch effort, restore from backup, a second copy of the system, then go in and then export it out as a WAV file. So it, it possible if you had a backup of it before it was deleted, but again, super challenging to do that. Messages we covered. Uh, a group message here, individual messages. Remember, those are there. The last thing I want to touch on is is events. Um, we can create events in here that I can invite team members to. Oh, sorry about this. I closed out my um, uh, Outlook before we started and uh, lost my sync here. Well. That's kind of a demo blow up, so I'm going to skip that for now. Let me move on to uh, what I wanted to cover today inside of uh, the desktop client as kind of the last thing is call handling modes and escalation profiles, and then we're going to get into some admin training as well. Also keep in mind that we are uh, keeping the Q&A open, and we're keeping the chat open to try to monitor those, so please feel free to submit in there uh, anything you'd like to cover, and we'll try to include it as best we can. Give me just one moment on my other screen as I pull something up here. All right. So I want to change my call handling modes. I can either go to settings or I can click my own name and then click the wheel here. And this is going to let me go to settings. Pull it up on the other screen, drag this over so you can see it better. Once I'm in settings, I've got all these options. Call routing is where most of the uh, action is going to be from the user perspective. In call routing, remember we have all these call handling modes available in a meeting out of office. Do not disturb vacation and custom. So you can have customized call routing for every availability mode, have that availability mode uh, predefined so when you flip it on, it behaves exactly the way you like. The ones I use the most commonly myself are available in a meeting, out of office, and custom. 
for available, this is my every day. You call me right now. Um, actually, raises a good point. Let me change my call handling mode to in a meeting. That way my phone doesn't ring while we're on this demo. Um, so in available mode, here's what happens. Incoming calls go to my desk phone. No other phones ring simultaneously. It rings four times before it routes to my voicemail. It uses a voicemail greeting that's been customized. They are allowed to leave a voicemail. And if they press zero, it'll be forwarded to an auto attendant. If I want to change any of these, I can simply click this button and change that one thing, just like that. Or if I prefer, I can use the call routing wizard by clicking the start wizard button. So let's walk through this step by step. On an incoming call, what I wanted to do, it says ring my extension. I can choose to also simultaneously ring other numbers. I'm going to check that box, and my cell phone number is in there. Something I want to point out, several of you on this call have MyTel or Shortcell mobility. If you have MyTel or Shortcell mobility, and it's enabled and you're using it, MyTel will not let you put your cell phone number, which is your mobility number, in here as an additional ring because it's already going to ring that with mobility. So caveat on the SAML ring, if you have mobility, it's either mobility on and use it or SAML ring and use your cell phone number. So cell phone number there. Next, if I'm not picking up and I don't answer on my cell or my landline, what next? Well, I can keep ringing. I can forward the call. And that's what I choose to do. I forward a call to my voicemail. However, I could choose an alternate extension. I could say, I want my calls answered by Brittany Dufilly if I don't answer. So instead of going to my voicemail, I could have it go to a team member. Or I could have it go to a hunt group. All those things are options. Voicemail is the default. Here's the number of rings I could choose, any one from 4 to 20. Uh, keep in mind this on the rings, if you would. If you're simul ringing a cell phone, it takes about a ring before you hear it on your cell phone. So if it says four here, keep in mind you're probably going to only hear two to three rings on your cell. So I, I wouldn't put it less than four. That's just my take on that. Last thing on the rings, each ring is roughly six seconds. So four rings about 24 seconds, and most people are fine with that. Next step. Um, do I want to use Find Me? As, as I've covered before, what Find Me allows you to do is Find Me lets you give the caller options to try additional extensions to reach you. So with Find Me enabled, it's going to use these numbers below. I'm going to say try my cell phone number for four rings, right? And then I could check a second number. And I could try it for six rings. In this scenario, when you call me in the available mode, if I don't answer, and you chose to do the find me option, it's going to try me on my cell phone number for four rings. If it doesn't get me there, it's then going to go to a second number and try me for six rings. If it doesn't get me there, it will pull it back into the MyTel and let the caller know I could not be reached. So those are all those options on find me. A quick uh, note on Find Me as well, which is kind of neat. This prompt caller to record their name. What this does is, when you have it checked, if a caller triggers the Find Me and it's going to try your cell phone, it's going to ask them, please state your name after the tone. And they'll say who they are. Then it'll call me and say, hey, Don Gulling, you have a call from, and it'll play back what they said and I can choose to accept or decline. If I decline it, it doesn't tell the caller, hey, he ignored you. It just says we were unable to locate your party. So that's the prompt the caller for the recording of their name. All right. So I'm going to leave that on, go to next. Let's take this one off, though. Just do a single number. I already have a custom greeting. I'm not going to change it, but you could. And this is where you change where it's recorded, either from your telephone or from your uh, computer. It can be recorded from either one. You click on record greeting, it pulls up a dialog box, you click record, there you go. I'm going to skip that. Uh, and voicemail. Yes, they can or no, they can't leave a voicemail. I've had people ask me before, why would you choose the option to say no, they can't leave a voicemail? 
if you're on a prolonged vacation, let's say, uh, or something bad happened, heaven forbid, uh, let, you know, let's say I had a, a, an accident of some kind or I was recovering from surgery or some procedure and I was going to be out for, you know, a month or three weeks, I might choose to tell my callers, you know, unfortunately, due to a personal emergency, I'll be out of the office for an extended period during this time. My assistant and my team members are going to help. Please press zero, and your call will be sent to my team so they can assist you, uh, and I'll try to return calls to all clients when I get back to the office. But then turn the voicemail off because I don't want them to think that they could leave a message and then uh, get a call back when I'm going to be gone for a long time. So those are all the options. Uh, additionally, I have the option for power routing rules. I covered these on a prior webinar, but I want to touch on them again briefly here. And what power routing rules let us do is have the ability to kind of override uh, either in a positive way, uh, meaning it meets a criteria, or kind of in a it doesn't meet a criteria way. And one of the ones I'd had here was uh, private calls. So on my cell phone lately, I've, I've had a rash of these marketing calls letting me know uh, the Jeep, I just, I just bought a brand new Jeep like a month ago, a Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee for me. My other one was six years old. I got a new one. I get calls now telling me my vehicle's eligible for an extended warranty. I don't know if they're thinking the old Jeep or the new Jeep or if it's a spam. I don't really care. I just don't want the call. Luckily, Verizon, my cell phone carrier, is trying not to announce to tag these and saying potential spam. But on the landline, the way we see that is it might say private caller or no caller ID. If it says private caller, I can just say, I don't want to take it at all. It goes straight to my voicemail because it's probably spam. So here what I've done is I've had a private calls rule, chose this dialog box that says the number is private, right, and then just send it to my voicemail. So that's a power routing rule to kind of override that. Same with this out of area or unknown. If the call is from the, it says out of area or caller ID unknown, I choose to go to my voicemail as well. I can screen it and pick it up later and return the call if it's a legit call and not just some kind of spammy call. So those are some great power routing rules. I recommend everybody implementing those to uh, kind of cut back on some of those uh, spammier phone calls. I also had a bunch of other ones, uh, a nuisance call, where I put in a specific number as an example. That's not really a number. That's a made-up number. But the idea being you get a call and it matches this number send it to my voicemail. So maybe you've got a, um, this is a popular problem it seems, a call from a fax machine. One of my clients had complained that they were getting calls and they'd answer it and it would go beep, beep, and it was a fax machine. The problem was they had to answer the call because the caller ID was coming through as being one of their biggest clients, the main number for one of their biggest clients. It's the way that customers phone system was set up, every call that came in from that client had the same caller ID no matter what, even the fax machine. So they kind of couldn't screen them out. Um, they said, well, I got to do something, so I'll send them to voicemail. So they do a number is, that's the number, they send it to voicemail. Now that client calls, they can go back and, you know, call them back and say, hey, sorry, I missed your call. So those are uh, a lot of those power routing rules. I'd recommend you get in there and try those out to see what they can do for you. A lot of great uh, functionality in there that you could take advantage of. So moving on, um, let me exit this. So that covers everything in the Connect client, except for one thing I want to just briefly touch on. I'm going to go into uh, some administrative functionality. But what you can see here on the right is I have a custom toolbar. This toolbar is one that's, uh, you know, kind of for me alone, but you can set up in the Connect Client or even in 14.2 the ability to have these custom toolbars. And then under the plus symbol here, users have the ability to either add or delete uh, toolbar commands. So this is the list of toolbar options that are available to me. They're configured in Director by an administrator. So administrators can go into director, create toolbars, then those toolbars can be given to a user, and the user can check on or off which buttons they do and don't want. So uh, very powerful functionality. I probably use this more than anything 
because it's faster than even going to the contact button. And I love this capability. I can just click a name. Like right now I can see my finance manager Tangerine is available. I could click it dials her. Mike's available, click to dial them and so on. So it gives me a visual representation of their presence and it also allows me to do a click to dial and you can do some other cool stuff with it too. So I'm going to cover that here in just one second. Uh, so uh, anybody out there that has anything for the uh, Connect client, please pop it over in the questions of the chat, and we're going to move on into director and admin functionality. And uh, feel free to also uh, send your questions in chat in there. So here we are inside the Mitel Connect director. When you first log in, it takes you here, which is your uh, Quick Look dashboard. You probably don't need to do much here. We're monitor if you're a support client of ours, we're already monitoring this for you and keeping an eye on performance and acting on things proactively. But if you like to take a look at it, some great data. You also have the ability to look at it from an hour, a 12-hour, one day, seven day, 30 day. When I click on this 30 day, it's going to take a second to refresh, but I'll go ahead and do that for us. And what it'll do is show us a 30 day period of call volume, uh, feature utilization. I guarantee you this one was a day where I was doing a demo, because huh? that's why I got all that on there. And then it'll show you any kind of call quality issues that were seen, uh, trunk utilization and CPU utilization. With this call quality indicator, those are clickable, so I can uh, hover over that and click it, and it will find me the issue and say, okay, this is a call between Paul and Marie um, that happened on 825. And I can see that was a mean opinion score on Marie's side of 2.8 because of a high uh, delay, 231 millisecond delay. Anything over 90 is usually high. This mean opinion score, or MOS, is an industry term, and it's, a, it's kind of a shortcut for uh, assessing the grade. Like Just like in a kid's school, you got A's, B's, C's, D's, and F's. And a mean opinion score world, a 4.0 or higher is an A. A 3.0 or higher is a B. So this is a C. Um, Marie happens to work out of a, a, a home office in Maine. And she was using her internet link to talk to us via internet. So I'm sure that the reason that the delay was so high was because she was on internet. Just got a question popped in here. It says, when you make a call with the client, should the call go through the computer speakers and microphone? Uh, the answer to that question is it only goes to the computer speakers and microphone if you're using the soft phone. So here I am in my client, and up here you'll see a little icon. And when I hover, it says desk phone. So right now, when I dial a call, let me call my cell. So I'm going to go ahead and dial my cell phone. And here it is. So I'm going to click to dial it. And I've got my cell phone set on, on, on silent mode, OK? So you can hear it ringing. And I'm calling it from my phone, not from my computer. I'm going to hang up. However, I could switch to soft phone. And soft phone allows me to use my computer as my telephone. Uh, that's great for remote workers or mobile workforce, and I can choose the mic I want to use. I've got a, I've got a Yeti mic on my desktop right here I could use, and it will play through my computer speakers and use my computer microphone when I'm in soft phone mode. So uh, last thing on that, just since we're in here, I can also do something called external assignment, meaning the audio path then goes over my cell phone or another 10-digit number. And the reason you could use that is, let's say, you didn't want to use internet for audio because you were concerned about internet audio quality, but you did want to be able to work from home, you could use an external assignment of your 10-digit number at your house or your cell, then use like a terminal server connection where you run the connect client, and then when you dial from the connect client, it actually rings your cell phone, you answer it, and then it places the call from a landline. That's a really neat trick way to do things and put the audio path over a cell or a landline to avoid potential internet call quality issues. So those are the three options there, desk phone, uh, soft phone, and external assignment. So 
to answer your question in a long roundabout way, um, if you use the client in soft phone, it definitely does use your computer speakers and mic. But if you're assigned to your desk phone, your, it literally picks up your phone line and dials out via your telephone. So hopefully that answers your question. And thanks for putting that in there. So let's go back here to the, uh, to the dashboard. Um, I think we've kind of seen how this all works. Uh, what I want to show you on the dashboard today, though, is I want to I want to pivot away from that actually and dig into some of the administrative functionality that I think that a lot of us would like to know uh, kind of a little bit more about. So give me one second while I re-swizzle my other screen so I can see everyone's questions a little bit better. Um, this chat window is kind of getting a little small now, so just forgive me while I clear that up. Okay, so moving on to um, that toolbar. So if you recall, we talked about the fact that I've got this client and I have this toolbar. So I do want to show you where that's at. I'm going to go to the wrench, which is how I maintain things. And let's say I didn't know where to go look and I couldn't remember because you know, I go too fast. I could literally just type in toolbar and it will find it for you. I love that. Uh, so you just click global toolbars. It takes me to the global toolbars area. My recommendation for you is to think about how your you know, organization uses phones and say, all right, maybe I'm going to put these things in groups. So I'm going to do a global toolbar for the service team and call it service. I'm going to do a global toolbar for the MyTel techs and call it you know, MyTel tech. I'm going to do a global toolbar for sales and call it sales. And then you can go assign those toolbars to those individual users or groups so they have those choices. You'll see right here that we've got a help desk tool we call, and here are all the options that we've configured in that help desk tool. There's up to 24 buttons there. Now, remember, the users will have the ability to pick and choose which ones to have, okay? So they, don't, they won't see all 24 necessarily. So that's the help desk tool. We also have one called the MyTel text and Vertex tools. So this one I've only got, you know, eight configured. Uh, the training one I have just one configured. The MyTel text I have uh, six configured. By far the one with the most configured options is the help desk tool. So once you want to do one, let's go here to uh, training. And right now you'll see I've just got the one. It says other invoke URL VM quick reference. This is kind of neat. Uh, what it lets you do is it lets you put a button on a toolbar that pops up a document. Maybe it's an internal processes and procedures. Maybe it's something else. Uh, you'll see here I've got Shortel, which opens a browser URL, which is really neat. You can have it pop open a specific website, uh, maybe an internal one if you like. It goes to documentation or some process or workflow. Um, you can also do this one, which is the connect quick reference guide, which pops something open. If I click here, invoke URL, boom. There's my MyTel quick reference guide. So you could easily publish a button in a toolbar that lets everyone have a one button access to their voicemail quick reference guide. That way if they call support, say, hey, that's on your um, that's on one of your buttons. Just click the quick reference guide and it'll pop it right up. There you go. And boom, that's a PDF. How cool is that? So a lot of neat things you can do with those options. And as you can see, as I turn it on and off, it automatically kind of shows up in my toolbar. So that's what those, those toolbars can do for you. In here, I'm going to show you what all kinds of options there are. Um, there are a lot of them. Let me, let me do this. Expand the screen. Go to button number two. And I'm going to show you just the breadth and depth of the commands that you have access to. I'm not going to cover all of these because there are just so many of them. So tons of options that you can configure for these buttons. The most popular ones are obviously ones for uh, monitoring another extension on the team so you know what's up with that. So I'm going to make this one monitor. And I want to monitor, uh, let's say, um, someone none of you probably talked to, one of our finance team members. Her name is Cheryl, Cheryl Campbell. And I just start typing her name, Cheryl, and it tells me there she is. 
1454. I click it, and it gives me some options. One of them is this ring delay before alert. Right now it says don't ring. Here's what that means. If I set this as don't ring, whenever anyone calls Cheryl, my phone won't ring either. However, if I change this to none, meaning no delay, whenever someone calls Cheryl and I have this button map to my toolbar, I will also ring so I can know that she is ringing. If you set the delay to one or two, what happens is her phone will have to ring that one or two times before mine then starts ringing. Uh, this is a really powerful tool to use in environments where maybe you have a team uh, environment or you have frequent collaborators. Uh, I'll give kind of an old school example. One of our clients is a large uh, defense contractor in the Panhandle, and they have a, an office that's kind of a, a big square, and around the perimeter are private offices like a dozen private offices around the perimeter. And in the middle is a big open area with four cubicles. In each of those cubicles, there's a like assistant slash receptionist. And each of these assistants manages four or five people's offices. So what we would do was set on those assistants' phones, we'd set all of the people that they assist, we'd set their buttons up, and we'd set their ring delay to one or two, that way the assistant can know, hey, uh, you know, my boss or my, my coach or my manager's phone is ringing. I can grab the call for them and pick it up. Just had a great question come in about these toolbars. It says, for the global toolbar, if we create a button we want on all users, is there a global setting that would pre-populate this without the need for the user to manually check a box, i.e., all users get my telco reference guide? Yes. The answer to that question is absolutely you can do that. Give me a second, I'll show you how, but 100% you can do it. So uh, jumping ahead to the last things here, Cheryl's been listed. There's a ring delay. My phone would ring when she rings. It says show caller ID on monitored extensions only when ringing. So now not only will I be able to see Cheryl's phone ringing and pick it up, but also I will see what the caller ID is of the person that's calling her when her phone is ringing. So really cool in, in that kind of assistant slash manager mode. Um, I'm going <laughs> to say something politically incorrect, but this cracks, it does kind of crack me up. This is how long I've been doing this. So 15 years ago, when Shortel first came out with this capability, they actually called it boss secretary mode. That was what it was called back then. So uh, they don't call it that now. But I did find that funny that uh, kind of this boss secretary mode, it just cracks me up. It, it, you know, how things have changed. I mean, no one would call somebody that. Anyway, last couple things. No connected call action dial number, meaning if I'm on my client and there's no call connected, I'm not on the phone, I click it, it dials Matt. Uh, with connected call, I can do all these. I can do a transfer consultative or transfer intercom, meaning the MyTel knows I'm on, I'm on the phone talking to my buddy Aaron, and I want to transfer it to Matt, I, and I have this setting for transfer consultative. I click the Matt button. It initiates a transfer function to Matt, calls Matt privately, say, hey, Matt, I've got Aaron. He needs to talk to you. You have a second, and I can complete the call. So I don't have to use the transfer key. It knows I want to transfer in that scenario. I could also do a transfer blind. Um, you've got all those options there. I won't cover them all. I'm going to just do a dial number. And then on no connected call action, unused dial number or whisper page. Uh, almost no one uses these, but, whisp but intercom is a nice one. If you allow intercom, that's a class of service setting. Intercom will, will kind of override their call handling mode. So if you work with a coworker, and a coworker has their phone set to in a meeting or out of office, but they're actually not in a meeting or out of the office, they're at their desk, you press that button, it'll instantly click into speakerphone mode on their side, and you can listen in and talk to them. 
So that is a security permission setting because you don't want people to have this intercom mode available because potentially they could eavesdrop, I guess. But that is permissionable and by groups, and we cover that in another webinar, but that is an option. So those are all your options for uh, kind of these toolbar settings. Lots of them there. I'm going to go ahead and save this one, and now you'll see we have those. So back up to the question we got earlier about assigning it. So up here, you'll see that I've got a list of toolbars, and I have a list of where they're assigned. So to, to the question that came in, what you would do was you would pick the user group for all users. You would assign it to them, and you would check the box to pre-populate it. Then they would have it. So remember, it, it goes to your user groups. So you go to your groups function. If you've got multiple groups that people are in, you're going to have to put that toolbar in those groups, right? But you'll put that in there, and you'll have it checked, and then it will show up. We have lots of groups, uh, I guess just for all kinds of reasons, but every organization I find has more than one group. Just remember, when you're in a user group, like this VCI users here, uh, you'll see under, uh, let's see here, toolbar one, two, and three. They can have up to three of them, 24 options per toolbar, so potentially you know, 72 buttons they could have. That would be totally unmanageable, of course, but you could do it. So you just set the toolbar you want them to have, and then when you go into their uh, communicator settings, you check that box and they have the button. So uh, that's global toolbars. Uh, what I want to cover right now, especially because we've got Labor Day coming up and we frequently get calls about this, is how to set up a holiday in auto attendant. What I want to do is I want to back up just a second. And Brittany, if you would, um, let's carve this one piece out and post it as its own kind of sub-webinar with just a two-minute demo on how to set up a holiday schedule. So here we are in Mytel Connect Director, and I want to set up a holiday schedule because I have Labor Day coming up, and I want my main number auto attendant to go to a special Labor Day or holiday greeting and not to my regular greeting. So I'm going to go over to the wrench, click on that, and then if I don't know where my auto attendants are, and I can't, I don't want to search for it, remember, you can always just type it up here, and you'll see there's an option right there that says auto attendant. So you don't have to remember where all those menus are. You just click it, and it takes you right there. Here's a list of all the Vertex auto attendants that we have defined at the top. And the one I use every day that you call into and reach us on is this VCI main AA. This is our main auto attendant, the primary one that answers uh, during the day. At the bottom, I'm going to expand this screen so we can see in more detail. So here's the general auto attendant settings, the uh, no DNS map. Here's the on hours button settings and the menu. We, we type in what it says. Here's the off hours. Here's the holiday. And here's a custom. So on hours has a schedule, and that schedule can be defined. You click on this, it'll take you right there to on hours, and you'll see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7.30 to 5.30 is our on hours. Now, off hours, by definition, is the time that's not covered by on hours. You don't have to define the off hours. So I'm going to go back to my auto attendant, go to VCI main A, Make this bigger. And I'm going to go to holiday. So we have Labor Day coming up. I have a predefined holiday meeting, that, uh, greeting that says, hey, because the holiday we're closed, here's how you get emergency support and so on. But where's the schedule? The schedule is the holiday schedule that we created. Here's the link. It takes you right there. I click it. It pulls up my holiday schedule. If you skim down to the bottom, you'll see on here, we have several holidays, you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving from last year, from this year, New Year's, Independence Day, Memorial Day, they're in there. But we don't have Labor Day in there. So I'm going to go ahead and add it. There's a little tiny button. I hate it. It's so small. But it's right here. It says Add. I click that. It opens another box at the bottom. I type in Labor Day. Then on the date... I click this, and it gives me a calendar. I'm going to jump ahead, 
uh, Labor Day this year is observed on the 7th, the first Monday in September. I click Save, and now my holiday schedule is already in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's do another one. Let's do uh, Christmas. Let's change it, though. So here's Christmas. That's the 2019 version. Let's bring it out to 2020. And Christmas is on a Friday this year. Everybody knows that's great, right? Because you get a, almost a four-day weekend, half day of Christmas Eve typically, right? That's nice. Click Save. Thanksgiving, I'll update that to 2020 as well. Just go here to 2020. And Thanksgiving 2020 is on the third Thursday. So it's the 19th. Am I right on that? Is that the 19th? Nope, it's the 26th. Sorry, guys. Ladies and guys, I'm an idiot. So it's the 26th, last Thursday. I click Save. And now I've got my holiday calendar updated. I have Labor Day on there. I have Thanksgiving Day on there. And I have Christmas on there for 2020, kind of just like that. Now I'm my auto attendant on my main AA. On that day of Labor Day, it's going to kick into holiday mode and it's going to go to my holiday greeting. The holiday greeting, we already have a file there. Um, let me go play it. Let you hear it real quick. Thank you for calling Vertex Consulting, a leading provider of computer networks and telephone systems. This is Steve Hall you're hearing. Our office is closed in observance of the holiday. If you would like to leave a message to be returned the next business day, please press 2. If your computer network telephone system is hard down and you need emergency support, please press 3 and you will be routed to our on-call support mailbox. So that's our holiday greeting. It's kind of a generic, we're closed for the holiday. That way we don't have to record it every holiday with a new one. Uh, as you notice, though, I wanted to let you hear that we're never going to leave you without support. We're never going to leave you high and dry. We do have an option for emergency support, even on a holiday. We're going to be here for you and if you need us. So. Uh, that said, remember there's a holiday, there's a holiday schedule, and you have a holiday greeting. Now let's say you want to change your holiday greeting and we create a custom one and talk about Labor Day. It's really easy to do, lots of ways to do it. One, you can import a WAV file. So you can have a professional voice talent do it for you. Uh, we have that. We have a great team of people called Worldly Voices. It's very inexpensive. I, I mean, for what they do, the work they do is great. and It's very low cost. So Worldly Voices can do one for you in kind of any voice, multiple languages, you name it. I mean, we're glad to do it for you, of course. Brian uh, uh, and Steve have the most popularly requested voices. Every time I call in, I'm hearing them on our customers' phone systems. Or you can record it yourself on your PC and import it as a WAV file. Additionally, you can record it just live from your phone. It just rang my phone to let me record the greeting. It's just that easy. Um, on preferences, uh, you can choose, do you want it to record it from your uh, telephone or for, from somebody else's phone? So you've got a lot of options here. Let's back up one more second and show you. Sorry, I should hit cancel. When I click preferences, it lets me choose record from a PC or record from my phone, and then whose phone to record from. Like I could choose Matt at 1459, his phone would ring and he would record it. If I choose me at 1450, it's, it's my phone and I record it. So that's where you check your phone to record the automated attendant. So in summary, for the auto attendant for holiday mode, you go to the auto attendant you want to adjust. You go to the holiday tab. You go to that schedule. You add or update the date. And then you go back to the auto attendant and you just double check your greeting to make sure that it says exactly what you want to say. You can play it back. You can record it again from your phone or desktop or somebody else's phone or import one from a WAV file. So that is how you change your uh, automated attendant. Last thing I want to touch on today, and I am monitoring both chat and questions for any last questions, so please think about posing those, is I do want to quickly touch on something I was asked about specifically to cover by a client, which is pickup groups. So pickup groups are the ability for you to create a button that allows you in a team environment to touch a single button 
and potentially grab any number of phones that are ringing. So in a pickup group world, let's say you're working in the area where there's you and five others. There's six people in this group that work close together. We create a pickup group with all six of you in it. Then we assign a button to your, your toolbar there, that custom toolbar. And any time any of those six phones are ringing, no matter which one, you click that button and it picks it up. So the benefit is you can monitor lots of callers, lots of calls with a single button. So I'm going to create a, uh, you already see I have a pickup group now. It's called Sales Pickup. You'll see it's right here, Sales Pickup. And here's the extension list, right, the sales group extension list that I created. So here's all the phones that are in that extension list. So I'm going to back up, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you a, creating a new one. So I'm going to click this, click New. Let's call this one Training Pickup. I'm going to put this on my virtual switch. Do remember, if you're an administrator, that uh, pickup groups do consume a little bit of resources on a physical switch. So if you have a, a virtual switch, we ask you to put it on there. That makes the most sense. And then what extension list do you want to have it on? So I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, let's leave it for this right now. I'll come back and change it. So I've got the training pickup group. I've got it set for extension list BP. Let me add a new extension list. So I'm going to click a new one, type in here training group. And I saw your questions pop in. I'm going to get to them right in a second. So here I'm going to go ahead and add some folks in there. Derek, say Brittany. Let's do um, more rows here. Let's go to... Um, Oh, I don't want to complicate this too much. Matt, and I'll add one more, just so you can see me scroll through here. John. So now that's the pickup group. Uh, better put myself into it, right? Don. Um, having a difficult time seeing my own screen right now. There we go. Don. So now we're all in that group. It's called training group. I hit save. When I go back to my pickup groups, I click on training. I change this to the training group. Now that is the pickup group. And we map that button to their toolbar. Any of those phones ring, they click and it picks up. So quick questions came in. I'm curious to find out how to set up connect client on an iPad, iPhone, other mobile device. What's needed if you have on a premise system? And also to add a toolbar for an individual user, let me uh, does that user need to have their own user group created? Um, so the second question we'll do first. So to add a toolbar for an individual user, does that user need to have their own user group created? Uh, the answer is no, they don't. I probably should have covered this with you. But under users, when you pick a user, I'll go to my own, and you go to view programmable buttons, there's a client toolbars. Client toolbars are just for that one person. So everything that I had said earlier about group toolbars, the same kinds of capabilities and functionality, it's all here at the client toolbar level. So you can create a custom toolbar for a single user by going to that user and going to their client toolbar section and give them whatever you like. Uh, you've got the same kind of number of options, 24 different options there. So hopefully that answers your question, Daniel. And then the next question from Frank on the um, how to set up connect client on an iPad, iPhone, or other mobile device, what's needed uh, if you have an on-premise system. The best way to do linking between uh, your mobile device and your premise system, in my opinion, the, the best way is the Mitel mobility client. And so in the mobility client, you need something called a mobility router, which is a virtual appliance that there's no charge for in Connect. And then if your user profile has the mobility client license in it, which is a standard or higher, then you can install that app and use it uh, for placing calls, receiving calls over Wi-Fi. So be glad to uh, walk through that. Frank, if you want to email or call me or your sales rep, uh, we'll be glad to kind of cover that with you. That's the best way to use an app 
to place and receive calls over Wi-Fi. I do want you to keep in mind, though, something to not forget, because this is probably more popular, is remember uh, right here in your settings, you can just send a call over to an, a phone as long as it's got a, a phone plan. doesn't work on an iPad, but do remember you can have a call go right to a cell phone either simultaneously ringing it or you can uh, just extension assign it there. So for, for calls inbound, it's super easy to just have it go to the cell phone that way. The big get from the device is, with mobility as an example, is to um, allow you to place calls over Wi-Fi. So hopefully that answers your question. I see we are basically right on time at 3 o'clock. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining. Please remember to uh, take advantage of this training one-on-one -on -one or to your team. If we did not cover what you'd like and you want to go deeper on a topic, you email me personally, email the sales team, email uh, the help team, and say, hey, I, Don said I could get free training. Here's what I want to cover. And I will make it happen. Either I'll personally deliver the training or I'll assign one of our experts like Mike, Steve, Brian, or Scott to do it with you. And we'll do that with you one-on-one -on -one or to your group. And if you prefer, we could do it totally private. Or we could do it as a webinar that we record. And then you could share it with your team or we could share it with the public. So those options are all available to you in support. Um, that really is all we got time for today. We're right on the hour. I want to be very uh, respectful of your time. Thanks again for joining us. And, and lastly, I want to reemphasize, we are here to help you any way we can uh, during these unusual times with things kind of changing by the moment. Uh, you know, you need to count on those uh, that are there for you. In any way, they can be there for you. And that's us. We want to be there for you in any way we can. So please let us know how we can help you or your team uh, during these unusual times. We're here to help any way we can. Hope everybody has a great day. Thanks for joining us. And we'll have this recording on YouTube uh, later in the day. Have a great one.